please let me know your thoughts on this. Let us know your thoughts. If you were to do some continued research on this area, where do you think, colleagues, we should go with this in particular? If we were to look at this area that Basil had to, I'm always looking at how I could have been stronger even on my research. What other areas do you think we could cover here that we could go forward with together in studying this important topic? Does he have a second? The question is, as we continue this topic as a research project, as a continuing research project, for, at this conference theme, what other factors, what other areas do you think we could also include in terms of visualizing, studying, researching this so that we can have a very effective form of research that could be used by all? Does that help a little bit? Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm Issa Kawalia from Uganda. I am an academic and I also happen to be a technical officer for the Umbrella Organization of Interreligious Council of Uganda. Now, I take this opportunity to thank you, Madam, for this wonderful presentation. And uh, to answer that last call, let me suggest um, in a way of concretizing your views, in a way of supplementing what you've been talking about, I want us to look at Africa and basically in the Great Lakes region of uh, Uganda, DRC Congo, Central African Republic, South Sudan, uh, Burundi, Rwanda, ETC. Now, you really very, you presented a wonderful uh, presentation. For South Sudan, for example, during the time when it was seceding from North Sudan, it was basically a conflict, ethnic conflict, uh, also with religious kind of sentiments that the north were greater Arab and Sudanese, I mean, and Muslims, and then south, uh, basically blacks and, and, and the Christian. So there was that pulling of the rope between the Muslims and the Christians and blacks and Arabs. So a lot of uh, money was put by all the stakeholders. Those who supported the north were basically Arabs and Muslims. Those who supported the south were basically Christians and the west and uh, those very many good sympathizers of the southern people to have statehood. A lot of money was really put there. And therefore, I have a feeling that you've done a wonderful job, and then we should have that Elijah Hadi there. Now let us look at DRC Congo. Uh, I have a neighbor here I've been discussing about it. He comes from this Congo. Uh, it's a very big, big country. Since the time of, of, of history of that country, we've been told about Hitler, we've been told about very many people, but we have not learned about uh, Leopold. When Leopold ex exterminated around 15 million people, it was basically ethnic, and it's an issue of color, and a lot of people were really killed. Uh, history really, really judged us on that, because very many people really died there. Now, looking at Uganda, for example, where I come from, look at the ethno-religious conflict in that country. If you can imagine a poor country uh, on the issue of budgeting, policy making, 14 billion people put on security, an agrarian country, you put two billion people on agriculture. Look at that disparity. A, a lot of money put in direction where it is not supposed to go to serve people, education, health, ETC, ETC, as the last presenter from the UN were telling us, and the professor here was also telling us. And then policy guidelines, they know that really money should not go where it goes, but because they must keep themselves in power, they put three quarters of the budget to security. Maybe they also lack legitimacy and they know they must be there and read directly negatively the resources that they have, the very little resources. So I think that is also a very important uh, case for me. Now, there was a war, for example, the Lodi's Resistance Army. You hear that? Lodi's Resistance Army. Purely ethno-religious. Okay, and the, the, there was a lot of death of people. Many people were moved from their homes. Many people, now what is happening now after the war, whether there was a win, the vanquished were there, the victors were there, but a lot of money is being put in rehabilitation, reintegration, 
Uh, there is that economic cost of war, which, which really can be explained very clearly in her presentation. Uh, the, the aftermath of the war is very tricky. Very, very, very tricky. And uh, three quarters of the money is put in the north to rehabilitate those people because, why? All these people will go back and do what they understand best. What? Fighting. If they don't invest again back into reinvesting, reassuring these former combatants, they'll go back to war. Okay. Um, we, uh, de development is really deterred. Is deterred because it must be going there. I just wanted look, look at South Africa. Uh, it's, it's, the, the money that must be put in assuring the former victims of apartheid is too much. Uh, look at that phobia which is there now. It, it, government must put a lot of resources to, to reassure these people that the country is theirs and that the whites did not make any mistakes to make their own money. All right. It's, it's the, the, Thank you very much, madam. I think I'm wasting a lot of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you once more for your presentation. I really got, I, I was highly interested when you were making the presentation because it has connection with what I will present to and already I'm in the Department of Religion and Human Relations. You made mention of Nigeria, that they have series of conflicts from, from a particular date. Are you asking what do you, we think that can be added to the existing project? I think it's necessary to look at conflict at particular culture or particular country. Because I feel that the concept of conflict has many colors in different countries. What it is there may not be what is here. Secondly, for example, in Nigeria, we have phases of conflicts from particular year from now. It will be necessary to, to look at them, find whether there is a common denominator or a common cause between these things. Secondly, it will be necessary to find out if the ruling government has any hand in fueling conflict in Nigeria or a particular country, or what effort are they going to do it. <coughs> Maybe it only do we, if in theory we have religious uh, freedom, is it practice or is it in theory? I think it will be a good addition. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you so much. I, I probably, yeah, oh, did you have a, please go ahead. I think. Uh, good morning, everyone. So thank you so much for a very thoughtful presentation. And my name is Chopon Trudaliva. I'm from Central Asia. And uh, you um, just mentioned about what kind of recommendations or what kind of thoughts can be added to your presentation in terms of uh, making the voice of scholars more visible. From my point of view, I am anthropologist, partly and historian. And um, I think we um, have to make our efforts more on the methodological um, kind of inventions or methodological um, suggestions to policy makers and stakeholders who are working on the prevention of the conflicts or working on the conflict or post-conflict uh, uh, resolutions. Um, in this sense, I think methodology uh, can be provided from the interdisciplinary approaches. So if um, um, as a result of this conference, we'll somehow combine the efforts of sociologists, anthropologists, economists, and make some kind of visibility of our efforts through the internet or through other kind of forms of our, um, uh, how, how should I say, of our kind of um, uh, mutual efforts. Another point, I think we have to do not forget about the uh, efforts which can be made from the side of studentship. For instance, volunteering, 
uh, from the studentship sites uh, to make more kind of visible uh, the voice of growing scholars also can be uh, very important. And another uh, um, point uh, is again to raise the uh, voice of gender uh, academicians. I think gender uh, and um, um, conflict resolution, conflict prevention it has been not uh, uh, raised much and more. Thank you.